Thank you so much XD for providing the review key. Well, if you don't know who XD is, they always make a good game and their games is always fun. Some of their games are Sausage Man, a battle royale game, T3 Arena, and the upcoming Etheria Restart. Of course, Torchlight Infinite is also one of their games and they have a lot more fun games. Before I start this video, I will also be giving away 3 Steam keys for this game, the standard edition. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like and comment on this video and I'll be picking the winner in the next 5 days of this review and more details on the description box below. This is kinda like my first impressions or kind of like a review ongoing just to get you the idea what you're getting if you wanna buy this game. I really want to review this game but I was so busy this past week and I really wanna talk about this game because this game is so good for what you are getting in this price point. So Reverse Collapse Codename Bakery is a girls frontline single player spin-off. If you don't know what girls frontline is, it's a gacha game. Yeah, I know it kind of puts you off, but listen to me, I do recommend you guys to try it out because this gacha game is really good and the player base keeps on increasing. So basically, this game is like Grand Blue Fantasy and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Not the same, but you get the idea what I'm trying to say. Keep in mind that I'm playing this game in a preview version or a review version of this game. So at launch, they might change something, obviously make it better. You know what? Hopefully make it better. And as always in my review, or you know, in this case, my first impressions, I will always separate it into different sections, so there will be timestamps below. So, let's get to it. Story. So what the hell is this game about? Reverse Collapse Codename Bakery is a remake of Mika Team's first project, Bakery Girls in 2013 which is the original vessel of Girls Frontline universe. 30 years after the event of Girls Frontline, the world has plunged into the second Cold War. Antarctic Union Special Agent Mendo goes on a mission in the heart of the North Caucasus, unexpectedly ambushed by the forces of the Union of Rosettrism Nations Coalitions. His situation takes a dramatic turn with the appearance of Jeffrey, the mysterious silver-haired bakery girl. Together, they traverse hostile terrains, unraveling the dark secrets. With Jeffrey's ability to recall and challenge her fate, the game invites you to relive pivotal moments and make game-changing decisions leading to different endings. Yeah, you heard me right. This game has multiple endings. Visuals and performance. I want to talk about this first because this is what people see first. Art style is chibi, cute, and charming. It does stay true to the original game, but personally for me, I like the original game better. Maybe because the animation of a 2D game like this is too simple for my liking, but the detail of the animation when they are reloading and doing some other stuff is actually pretty good. You know what they are doing from just a simple animation. Performance wise, this game will run smoothly in any PC. ANY PC! If you take a look at the minimum system requirement for this game, it is Intel HD graphics. So if you have a laptop, then go get this game. Laptop is shitty guys, please. So fucking shitty. For in-game options, there's nothing much here because you get what you see and you don't even have the options to change voice dubbing. like from English to Japanese or Japanese to English. Maybe they will edit later on, but for now, only Japanese. So I'm kind of sad about the graphics options for this game, but but like I cannot complain much because it, this is just a 2D chibi game. And if this game works well with many, many PC, and it's good for this game because many people can try this game out without having to spend $2,000 on a fucking PC. Gameplay! This is what I love talking. Don't let the anime chibi art style turn you off from playing this game because the gameplay is actually outstanding and so in-depth. This is a strategy turn-based RPG. So if you have played Fire Emblem or SD Gundam G Generation or this Gaia, you certainly are very familiar with this genre. But it is not the same. At the start of the game, things are a bit slow. You do need to do some tutorials before getting the hang of it. Even after doing the tutorial, the game gives you a lot of things that can be overwhelming at times. 
there are so many things that you can do here and that is what I meant by this game's combat is so in-depth. You can get into cover, you can even stealth if you don't want to be seen. Like, come on man, stealth in a turn-based combat? Wow. I mean like, I haven't seen that in a while. You can use items that you pick up in that battlefield to use right there and then, or save it so you can use it in the next battlefield. Also in one battlefield or you know in one dungeon, you can get materials to upgrade your weapon and craft utilities. There is AP in this game, which is action point, so everything you do here requires AP like moving, using heal, deploying turrets, or even throwing grenades or getting into stealth mode. But because of it, if you stay in one place, it means that you don't move and you don't use your AP. And you can attack multiple times until your AP reaches zero in your turn. It makes you play this game a bit more defensively, so you just have to wait until the enemies are going towards you and then you mow them down without even moving. So it's like, I don't know, it's not a bad thing, but in this game you have to play it defensively or you can say strategically than any other games that you have played before. Or maybe you have played games like this, who knows man. The funny part is that first thing, because I think I played too many Disgaea games or like just a normal turn-based strategy RPG, I didn't realize that I can attack multiple times and I died multiple times because I didn't know that this system is more of a defensive side so like you don't have to move. But when I know I can attack multiple times in one turn, boy, I was having so much fun and not dying most of the time. There are so many characters in this game too, with everyone being unique in their own way. Every character has their own unique skills and guns. Also, guns in this game can be upgraded and not just leveling it up. You have modifiers for each character and for each gun too. And you also have this thing called genetic enhancement. Well, basically skills that you can unlock to use in a battlefield. Right after you start the new game, you can select three difficulty settings, easy, standard, and challenge, basically hard mode. I played this on standard, and I am having a hard time playing this game. I cannot imagine anyone playing this game in hard mode. I don't know if it's just the balancing is off, or just that the game is really really hard, or I am just a noob, but yeah, I am having a hard time playing this game even in standard difficulty. And I'm not gonna lie, I do like the challenge, but in my opinion, making this game challenging is like a double-edged sword because some people may experience boredom and get frustrated because this game is too challenging. Because when you die on the battlefield, there is no checkpoint. Even if there's only one enemy left, there is no checkpoint. I mean, you have, you know, you have autosave or maybe if you die in easy mode, you can restart that turn but no no checkpoint you get you get what i mean so if you die you will have to repeat the dungeon all over again not to mention one run can take up to like 10 minutes or maybe until 20 minutes uh and in one run there are a lot of enemies but don't worry um there is a solution for that in easy and standard difficulty you can go into this annihilation dungeon to gain more xp to level up your party and be a bit more overpowered from your enemies in the next main story. I am surprised that this game doesn't have autoplay, being that this is a spin-off from a gacha game, and many turn-based RPG games nowadays have implemented some kind of like autoplay system, like this Gaia 6, as the Gundam G Generation Wars, but hey, not gonna complain. This is just what I noticed, not complaining, because I personally don't really like autoplay that much in a single player game. And if you don't have autoplay and then you are having fun, so it means that the gameplay is doing justice to the game. And the combat or the gameplay is super, super good. More about the good part about this game um, is that some main story battles are not just mindlessly killing enemies. Sometimes you have to sneak out from your enemies to complete the dungeon. You can complete the dungeon without killing enemies and without being seen. Amazing. It's like Metal Gear Solid. Wow. And here in the battlefield, you have these small objectives uh, and you will gain more XP or rewards if you complete them. And all the objectives in each dungeon make sense. There's nothing out of the ordinary, like example if you are sneaking away from the battlefield, the objective is going to be like sneak without getting seen or if you're gonna kill all the enemies, it's gonna tell you to defeat like 30 or more enemies and basically don't die and so on. And maybe like 
use three grenades use more of this it's not choring to do and it's gonna push you to use all your utilities and learn just something that push you to learn playing this game and maybe if you haven't completed all the challenges in one battlefield or in one dungeon you can repeat that over and over again to do a perfect run and speaking of perfect run you will have 100 achievements on steam to complete yes 100 achievements like what the fuck like how can i do it all i don't remember a game that has 100 achievements even persona 5 royale that has 100 hours plus playtime doesn't have 100 achievements so this game is top notch in the achievement department <laughs> well i do have a complaint about this game as soon as i booted this game up i played this with my controller it was not a fun time because of how many things you can do in the combat the buttons and the shortcuts playing this with the controller all over the place but when you play this game using mouse and keyboard then it is pretty good so if you do like playing games with controller this game is not for you because the controls are quite horrible honestly i think that's the only complaint that i have in the gameplay or the combat like i don't know man this game is just so in that and the combat is like you have so many things to do that it will accompany you for like maybe like 50 hours this game is really really challenging you cannot just mindlessly play this game it is a very enjoyable experience playing this game um from the challenge alone so if you do like a challenging strategy turn-based rpg i think this game is really for you For audio, the voice acting is pretty good, but the pauses between the dialogue when speaking is horrible. I did set it to auto dialogue. They have this 2 to 3 second delay, and I did talk to the developer of this game and they came back to me just saying that they will address this to the project team. Hopefully they will change it because this game's voice acting is phenomenal. Not to mention this is a story driven game, so having auto dialogue with no delay is a nice touch which can make us immerse to the story and to the game and make it more interesting so you know like we can eat popcorn while we watch this game story is like anime there is so much to learn so many interesting characters but with no auto dialogue and then you have to press space or maybe press a in your controller all the time it is a bit choring to do because you just want to relax and enjoy the story and you know eat some popcorn while hearing them talk because again the voice acting is phenomenal yes you want to hear them talk all the time but when the auto dialogue is not working properly i was skipping the cutscenes because it was taking too long and I don't want to press a space every time they talk one line space one line space one line space so yeah a no for me that's the only complaint that I have being that playing with the controller is horrible so many shortcuts and so many buttons all over the place and the auto dialogue is not good sound effects in this game is a different story I actually like it even though some are quite mushy but the important one can be heard clearly. Like for example, the clacking of the bullets, the pop of the gun when shooting, everything is clear. So I do like that. Even though it is only a 2D game, the sound effect is outstanding. But I cannot say the same for the background music though. Because when I play this game, the background music is, I don't know, maybe too relaxing for my liking. And it is not hyping me up to play this game. It is to mellow not that it is some kind of a jazz mellow that will make you sleepy but it's like elden ring if you have played elden ring when you open the door in the first beginning of the game you will have this mellow kind of like sleepy airy music it's something like that it's something that i personally don't enjoy but hey if you do like it then please by all means i think it's not a big deal for most people because you can just turn it off and hear some other musics but that's just my first impressions but if you don't have any problem then all good all good so clearly overall this game is very good definitely worth playing and for 25 bucks you can get 50 hours of gameplay and content so why not i know uh, visually it's not the best but it's nice it's chibi it's charming it's cute voice acting is nice combat gameplay is absolutely outstanding so in depth I am so surprised by the combat itself because I thought this will be like a boring, a generic 
turn-based RPG, but hey, it's not. There's so many things you can do. You can use grenades, you can build this in-game, you can get something in-game, you can get just many, many things, you know? The unique characters, all the upgrades, and just everything in this game is good. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my first impression for this game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and don't forget about the giveaway for this game, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye guys.